with Dream Reviews and today I'm back with another new device. So this is the Meizu Note 9 that this got released not too long ago and I recently got my hands on this. So people are saying that the Meizu Note 9 is a strong contender for the Redmi Note 7. So let's find out what it really brings to the competition. Alright guys, so as soon as you unbox the Meizu Note 9, what you find in the box is very little. You first, of course, you get the phone itself. Next, you get a Type-C cable. And you also get a very standard 5V to 2A charger. So there is no casing in the box that how you would get with other manufacturers. Here, Meizu has kept it really simple by just providing you with these three items in the box. Okay, now that we've got the items in the box out of the way, let me just give you a very quick first impressions on this device. So here, let's take a quick look at the design of the Meizu Note 9. Uh, we have a small teardrop notch at the top, a not so thick chin at the bottom. Um, the sides are like somewhat painted in this metallic paint, but I'm not sure if it's real metal or not. Moving on to the back, we have a dual camera with your fingerprint scanner. So it's really good that Meizu managed to keep the fingerprint scanner on the back because the physical home button is always better than those in-display fingerprint scanners. So moving on to build quality, there's nothing wrong with, with its feeling in hand, but it actually feels pretty cheap. Like, I mean, first of all, when you look at this, uh, this back panel, some people claim that this is made of glass. So I reached out to Meizu and they said that it's made of porcelain or something like that. But if you can see here, there is some flex, like even when I press in on the device. So it kind of feels soft all around. And I personally think this is like really just plastic. So it also gets a lot of fingerprints. So it's not really the best quality and it doesn't really feel really good. Um, the screen. Okay, let's talk about the screen. The display here is a 6.2 inch LCD panel. And this is currently on its brightest settings, as you can see here. So this display, in my opinion, doesn't get very bright. I was outside and actually under the really strong sun, it is a bit difficult to see the screen and a bit difficult to operate. So the display here is a, it's kind of a small let down because other devices have such great LCD displays or even OLED displays right now, but LCD on the Meizu is not really good. And as you can see, the color shifts when you tilt the device. Of course, I mean, some of you may not be looking at the device like this and most of you will be looking on head on like this, but I think it's just worth mentioning to tell you guys that the the viewing angles is not that great. Okay, moving on, let's talk about the performance of the device. So the main thing that Meizu is selling here is the Snapdragon 675 that powers this device. So other budget smartphones may be having the Snapdragon 660, but Meizu is using the Snapdragon 675. The, the variant that I'm having here is a 6GB RAM version and it comes with 64GB of internal memory. So the memory is not expandable here. Um, you have your dual SIM slot as usual, but you can't really expand it via micro SD. So another thing to note here is that this is supposed to be a very quick device, but one main letdown with this device is the FlyMe OS. So some of you guys may hit the FunTouch OS on Vivo or Oppo devices, but seriously, if you try out FlyMe, I think it's even worse. Like, it really slows down using this device. I mean, like, the swipes are not instant. I mean, it, it's, it looks slow to me, it feels slow, and after using it for a couple of days, you, you tend to feel like this device is actually slowing you down instead of like making things very fast. Like even the animations are like slow to spring out. I mean, at this point, we are, I'm just really nitpicking because I've tried so many more great devices at this price range. And so it just feels slow. Like, look at that. I mean, it takes, it's, it's slow. I mean, in my opinion, it's really slow. But of course, some of you may find this acceptable. But yeah, so that is just the performance on the uh, everyday use on the Meizu Note 9. So one thing that I did experience that was good was the gaming on the device. So of course, I played PUBG to test out for you guys and PUBG ran really smoothly. So no issues here with gaming. Alright guys, next let's talk about the camera on this device. It is a 48 megapixel uh, main camera and a 5 megapixel depth sensor. So just like any other phone these days, this phone also comes with a 48 megapixel sensor. And this can be activated when you go to pro mode, like you hit more, then you go to pro, and you turn on 48 MP right here. 
So far, I've taken a couple of shots and the pictures turned out pretty good. Uh, daylight shots are of course pretty good right now because most phones are capable of taking very decent daylight shots. And night shots seems pretty good as well. So here is a, a quick montage of images taken by the camera on the Meizu Note 9. And please enjoy! Also, uh, pretty okay. I mean, you have your portrait mode right here, so you can have the blurred background if you like that kind of thing. And there is these funny snaps, so you can add these kind of uh, filters to your face. I mean, if this is your kind of thing that you like to play with, uh, yeah, this phone does come with that. So that's done with it. Next, I'm gonna talk to you about the single firing speaker at the bottom. So. This speaker is, uh, I mean, it does get to pretty good volumes, but I would say that this is an average speaker at best. Uh, compared to the Redmi Note 7, again, that has a way better speaker. And this is easily muffled, like when you close the, the gaps here right away, uh, you don't get any sound coming out from it. And yeah, I mean, the bass on this phone sounds pretty weak, in my opinion. And if you're looking for something with good speakers, like if you game a lot and you use your speakers like to get this uh, sound, sound output, um, maybe you have to choose some other device. Last but not least, let me talk about the battery life on this device. So the Meizu Note 9 comes with a 4000 mAh battery and it is pretty good, I would say. This is one good thing that I really like about the Meizu Note 9. Like the battery life is good and so far I've been getting really, uh, I haven't really been like putting it through heavy paces like how I usually do to my other devices, but battery life so far is great. Like I don't see any significant drops even when I game a lot and it doesn't get too warm at the back as well. So battery, thumbs up. All right guys, so here are my final thoughts on the Meizu Note 9. Like I said, this is gonna be a pretty short video. So I really wanted to like the Meizu Note 9 because I felt that being priced at 250 US dollars, although it was slightly more expensive than the Redmi Note 7, I expected it to be like, you know, somewhat similar to the performance of the Redmi Note 7. I also wanted this device to be like the underdog because the Redmi Note 7 is getting so much publicity on online platforms. However, I really have to be honest with you guys and I must say that I don't really like this device. I mean, the first thing first, like even this bag that flexes, <laughs> I, I don't know how you can accept that. Like. I mean, it feels cheap. And moving on to the front, you have this not so great LCD panel. And the display is something that you feast your eyes on for most of the time when using your smartphone. So it doesn't really give me a good experience here. Another main issue is with Flyme OS, which I mentioned just now. I, I don't just, I just can't like it, you know? I mean, it's not for me. Maybe you guys will like it. And another point that I need to mention was that it was really difficult to download the Play Store. So I couldn't get my Play Store installed correctly. So I can't download other apps. All in all, I didn't want to end this video on a negative note, but I just find very little to like of the Meizu Note 9. Anyway, if this is in your potential list of devices to own, I would definitely recommend you to skip it or maybe look for something else. I mean, there are other great phones in Meizu's lineup, but the Note 9 is unfortunately not one of it. However, the ultimate decision is in your hands, and if you still want this device, I would strongly recommend that you go to a Meizu shop or somewhere else and maybe just try it out for yourself. Who knows, you might like it. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you like it, please uh, like and subscribe. This helps me a lot, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!